right, so there's a lot of people fighting right now online and friends who used to be friends no longer being friends and people cutting each other out of their lives and family members at war with each other and people who are connected to various communities and groups no longer connected to various communities and groups and there's a lot of intensity and um, a lot of anger and uh, strong feelings, strong entrenched positions um, people that were in certain positions a few months ago or in different positions now and it's confusing the people that used to be in those other positions and you know just a lot of battle lines being drawn and and um, wars of a psychological mental level happening a war of ideas a war of um, different beliefs and thoughts and how do I feel about it all as a peace-loving man, you know, how do I feel about it all as a peace-loving man is the question. And as a peace-loving man, I find it very exciting, actually, which may be surprising to you. But if you're truly a man of peace or a woman of peace or a person that's grounded in the stillness and silence within, then there's this unconditional embrace of what's happening. Right, so I used to have an idea of what it meant to be at peace. Oh, I have to be some kind of pacifist that behaves this kind of way and dresses this kind of way and believes this and talks about this. And But what happens as you deepen on this path is the should and the shouldn't disappear and there's an authentic expression that moves through you in the moment. And that authentic expression that moves through you in the moment is that authentic expression that moves through you in the moment and that's all there is to it so it's just this aliveness to the moment it's this deep engagement of the moment and what i see happening right now is people being deeply engaged in life in a way that i've never seen before people deeply caring about what happens in a way i've never seen before people um really looking at things in a deeper way, in a way I've never seen before, really interested in trying to discover the truth, a way I've never seen before. And there's a lot of people that are interested in discovering the truth. And there's tension between people that are just trying to discover truth and people are not trying to discover the truth and people that have some aspect of the truth and people that have another aspect of the truth and people that are compassionate about these kinds of people, but they're not compassionate about those kinds of people and people that are compassionate about those kinds of people, but they're not compassionate about these kinds of people. So it's all coming to the surface. We're in a massive time of tremendous transformation, of tremendous revolution. I don't think it's too strong of a word to use. We're in a time of revolution. We're in a time of consciousness, on a level of consciousness, on a level of culture, on the level of politics, on the level of um, emotional intelligence, on the level of our relationships. We're in a time of massive upheaval, massive transformation, massive awakening, a massive revolution, a massive birth, and a massive death. A massive birth and a massive death. Let me say that one more time. A massive birth and a massive death because you don't have birth of something new unless you have the death of something old. So how it's all going to shake down, you know, um, detail by detail, Nobody knows the answer to that question. That's why we show up at the movie theater and buy us some popcorn and we tune in to find out, you know. But in this case, we're in the movie. We're all we're all characters in the movie. We're all engaged in this movie. We're all part of this thing. So again, to focus on what we want to create, what we want to make happen, what are we called to bring into this world, and to bring our attunement to that. And when something you notice something that's not align with that, then speak to it. Don't get stuck there. Don't get uh, bogged down there, but point it out. Speak to it and be open to other people's perceptions of what they see happening, what they know is happening. You know, one of the things I think is really exciting for me and my community is I've stepped out more and sharing my perspective on things and the way I look at things and what I think is the best way to move forward and my opinion on things. And I love that people are disagreeing with me. I love that people have a different perspective than I do, and they're not afraid to share it. I love that. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy about that. I'm appreciative about that. And sometimes I learn 
from what people are sharing and sometimes I don't learn what they're sharing from what they're sharing. Um, but I always pay attention and I listen to what people are sharing and anyone who's interested in wisdom, anyone who's interested in um, developing a deep understanding and wisdom of life has developed that from listening to what other people are sharing and being open to feedback. And there was a time, you know, some years ago where I was starting to get in the space where people were kind of viewing me as that kind of like guru thing. And I so happy that I fully stated very clearly that I was not interested in that and didn't want that and renounced that fully. And the only way to have a really truly beautiful community is when everyone feels free, everyone feels free to disagree with anyone else and no one has to do anything they don't want to do. And we're not aligned by having the same beliefs or having the same ideas. That's, that's, that's Nazi, Nazi-ism, right? It's like, no, we're connected by the heart. We're, we're uh, like-hearted regardless of whatever our beliefs are or ideas are, which are ever-changing, by the way. What someone thinks this week may be different than what they think next week. That's why we talk to each other and have discussions and have dialogues and have passionate debates so we can expand our consciousness, hopefully that's why, and be open to a different perspective or to broadening our perspective. I broaden my perspective all the time. I've broadened my perspective tremendously in the last few months. So I'm grateful that people have the freedom to disagree with anyone else and no one has to do anything they don't want to do. That's been the key of all of my workshops, all of my retreats, all of my relationships, personal or professional. No one has to do anything they don't want to do. That's always the number one level. And that's the kind of world I would like to see. No one has to do anything they don't want to do. Because there's this tension right now between freedom and community. And people have this idea that or to have community, you have to give up your personal freedom. No. Absolutely 100% no. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the only way to have true community is to be grounded in your own sovereignty. That's how you have true community. Otherwise, it becomes some top-town authoritarian dictatorship guru nonsense, you know? So we want true community. We want true community in my in our, this community that I'm a part of. We want true community globally. At least I do. That's what I, that's what I would like to see, and that's what I would like to see because that's where I see people really relax uh, be in a space where they can open their hearts, open their minds, and be available to the universal creative intelligence that's able to move through them and share the unique expression of who they are in the world. So keep debating, keep arguing, keep fighting, keep the, the passion, keep the intensity, keep battling, but just know underneath it all, we all care about each other. We all love each other. We're all family. And we're all just trying to find out what the truth is. We're all just trying to get to the bottom of what's real, what's genuine, what's true. And creating a more beautiful world together.